In today's episode, we are going to uh, t take a quick look at how we can use Alien Skin software to turn this shot um, of a nice looking horse against a pretty much high key background. I shot this against snow and uh, so anyway I uh, did it in a way to where I could kind of blow out the background and start with a high key look and so we're going to work at turning that into this um, with Alien Skin Exposure and then also Alien Skin Snap Art. And so to get started we're going to uh, take this into Photoshop um, to do our edit process here. I prefer to run Alien Skin uh, products out of Photoshop most of the time because it gives you the ability to do some advanced things like masking and uh, things like that. So the first thing we're going to do is to work at getting kind of a color look on the animal itself. So I'm going to take this into um, Exposure. I'm using Exposure 7, but there's not really anything that's kind of specific to what I'm doing here. Now the preset that I'm using is a I've chosen already in advance is a version of the Technicolor and uh, this is the uh, two strip green and red and it's got some fading. I've obviously done some modification to it here and I've taken down the intensity a bit but it's more about getting a color that I like in the actual uh, texture of the hair and the fur on the horse. Obviously our background is still you know very plain and so this is more about that. I'm adding just a bit of grain um, to give a, a look to it overall and we're going to add some other layers as we go but this will give you an idea of the kind of the modifications. I'm not adding any vignetting at this stage. I'm not adding any split toning. Basically using the preset itself and then got a little work here on the tone curve and so I'm going to go ahead and apply that and uh, after that applies you'll see that um, we have a just a little bit more kind of punch in the color and then also just some increased contrast towards the upper part of the tone curve and so already this makes quite I believe a noticeable difference in the visual impact so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this magic selection tool here and I want to get at least a rough um, outline of this and, and so you have a couple of choices here. Um, you can go into refining the edge by um, and we'll just do that quickly here. Uh, I won't get too far deep into these settings because I'm not really doing anything particularly advanced against a white background you can see that there's just a little place where the some extra stray hair is coming off and so I'm just going to um, work just right outside that edge just to pick up some of that uh, hair that's uh, standing out and getting that masked a bit but uh, no need to uh, reinvent the wheel here I just mostly want to get these uh, color areas like this and um, so we've gotten a pretty decent and so now on my output just note that I am doing some decontaminating of colors but I most importantly I want a new layer with a layer mask here. So I'm going to apply that and so you'll see now that uh, we have a new layer mask that's been applied. I want to now work on this background. Now I'm using uh, some textures. There's, a, there's many textures that are out there on the internet that are available in a variety of ways. Many of them available for free. Uh, this particular one that I'm using is one that's by uh, Jessica Drossen and so anyway um, I've chosen this felt background and so I'm going to drag that over the top. Now you're going to see initially that uh, it's covering everything which is fine but now that we have this already here um, let's see we'll, we'll select it again we're going to um, going to add that mask to the selection again and then going back up to this texture layer we're going to um, just click the masking button and so we have a quick mask here and you'll see it's it's not perfect for our purposes and so um, we can do a little bit more work to blend that in um, but for our purposes here this is this is good enough I'm going to just back off that um, just a just a little bit because I want to mostly use this now as we go into um, snap art to uh, to create that and so what I'm going to do here is I want to combine all of what we've done into a new layer and we're going to do shift control alt e 
and that will just basically create a new layer that uh, has everything that we've done so far in one layer. And so you need to do that just because you need something, because we've been doing some masking, something flat here, and so that we can take that into Alien Skin. We're going to launch SnapArt 4 now. And uh, there's nothing here that won't necessarily work with an older version of SnapArt, but this is just the one that uh, I actually have right now. Now, I have a, a variety of presets. There's some that are already uh, built into this, and, and so we have a variety of choices. Um, I have one that's a modification of an oil paint, um, and so let me just see if we can pull up some information about it. And so it's from the effects tour, but it's an oil paint based, and, and I've named it Autumn Abstract. Uh, Mostly because it's got some nice warming that I, I think is going to look nice here. And, and so, anyway, let's just take a quick look at the settings. And so the brush size here is 20, photorealism is 29, paint thickness 43, stroke length 49, color variation. Um, and we'll come back to the mask area in just a moment. But you see down here in colors, I have gone towards adding some warmth and um, a fair bit of color saturation. And in fact, I think that I want to take this a little bit further here. I want it to be uh, nice and warm and rich here. And, uh, and so you'll see the, the overall look. Now I like the, part of what, the reason why I really like SnapArt in this setting is because it, it allows the, the blending of our background texture and our actual subject to be a little more organic in its process. But uh, now we're going to just add a little bit more detail back into the face of the horse here. And so with, to do that, um, SnapArt 4 has a nice um, masking area. And so I'm just going to do a quick paint over the uh, face of the horse itself. I really like the SnapArt look and the texture of the hair, but I just want uh, there to be a little bit more, particularly in the eye contact, just to be a little bit more photorealism. And so that's what kind of jumps out and catches your eye. And so um, I like that look, and so I'm going to apply that. And so um, it'll take a little bit longer for SnapArt to uh, do its rendering. There's a lot that's going on there under, underneath the hood. This is an amazing program that, because it allows you to do so many uh, steps or so many in one step, what would take a, a long time to achieve in a similar fashion in Photoshop. Now. At this stage, we have a couple of choices. I like uh, the look already here in a lot of ways, but I think what I'm going to do to make that, just give it a little more visual impact, is I'm going to drag this layer down and duplicate it. And then I am going to uh, do a, a soft um, light blend. I'll pull that down just a little bit in its opacity. But, uh, and so it's fairly low, but as you'll see, it just, it's giving that just a little bit more contrast and visual punch here. And uh, there's already some natural vignetting from our, uh, from the texture that we added, but I want to just show you one more thing that can add something to this. And it's, now we could take that back into Lightroom, for example, and add vignetting there. Uh, I just want to show you something that, that's uh, kind of neat here. We just throw an empty layer on top of that. And, and, why I think this is, is kind of cool is that we're going to create a vignette that kind of uses some coloration from our actual image. And so um, I'm going to choose kind of a dark spot of the coat. And so we've got this color here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a circle with the, the circle tool here. And, uh, and so I'm going to kind of place that where I want it. And so, and then what's important here is I'm going to select inverse. And then we're going to grab that color that we've selected and the paint bucket, and we're going to dump in. You say, oh, well, that looks terrible. And it does. But uh, I've learned that the Gaussian blur filter can be used in so many really, really cool ways. So first we're going to deselect this. And, and I found that when using textures or blending layers, there's an amazing amount of flexibility that comes with using the Gaussian blur tool. And so right now we have a very hard edge, okay? And so that looks terrible. But we'll find that as we just begin to make sure you've deselected first, as you begin to move the Gaussian blur filter along, it enables you to, um, to really kind of diminish that effect and feather it out in a beautiful way that creates a very nicely organic um, 
an or nice organic vignetting. And so as you begin to blur that out, it creates a very natural uh, vignetting that uh, I think looks really great. And so then, of course, we still have the control over the opacity to bring that down a little bit further. And so as an end result, we have just, a, a, I think, a very natural and, of course, color matching vignette that helps to draw the eye in towards the actual look of the animal. Now, we have a couple of choices here. We can be done. It looks pretty cool already. Um, or if you want to get more creative now, you could create another layer over the top. That's con Control, Shift, Alt, or Command, and E. And uh, you could go back into Alien Skin Exposure and uh, just play around with that a bit more. Or you could take it back to um, whatever piece of software you're at and be done. But one nice thing about going in and playing with Alien Skin Exposure now is that now that you have kind of a more finished product, it means that whatever toning you're, do you're doing is, is affecting this as a whole now. And so again, it, it just means that everything kind of blends together a little bit more fully. And so uh, here's like our before look. And so here's another custom filter. And, and I like the look of that. You see how it's just adding more reds into it and really bringing out some nice coloration um, in the background. And so achieving a really handsome looking effect. And so I'm going to apply that. I like that, just that extra bit. And I find that I often, it's, it's a wise thing with, when you're kind of at the almost final stage to go back into Alien Skin and just uh, see if there's just that last little bit of magic to be applied there. And so just to give you a quick idea of what we have accomplished here, I'm going to put all of these into a group. And so um, it's nice and easy to turn them on and off. And so you can see we started with this and we have achieve that. A, a nice looking um, horse portrait there that uh, is a, I think, a very classy finish on that and has kind of the, the artistry that Snap Art and then the toning that Exposure 7 allows. So I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, perhaps learned a little bit along the way. And uh, this is a, a great way to use this. And because of the ability to mask and snap art, you can even do this with people and it creates some really, really classic looking uh, oil painterly type portraits that I think you'll find your clients will really enjoy. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You will also find that if you use my name, one word, Dustin Abbott, at uh, Alien Skin, it will give you 10% off all of their products. And so, if you haven't ar invested already, please do so. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.